So all in all, I will say the airport hotel was definitely worth it. Um, and now I'm back down, basically this is the middle. So terminal one is over there, terminal two is that way, and this big round thing is, you know, it goes right up to uh, Hotel 168. You can't miss it. <laughs> um, so, you know, for me, it, it was great. And then, of course, there's a Starbucks and a McDonald's. So I can pretty much get rid of the hell I want. Um, I'm probably going to grab some McDonald's. Uh, I'm not sure, but I'm going to head over. To, anyway, so my flight is Terminal 1, and I'm out of uh, uh, with Delta. So it's about 2, 2.30, and so I have uh, a while before my flight leaves. But what I've discovered is... You see this line here? This is basically just to get on to the metro. Uh, now, gratefully, um, you know, the good news there is that there's a lot of security. So every time you sort of enter something, um, they x-ray all your bags. Um, and you go through a metal detector. Um, so, you know, that's not bad. Um, the other thing here, too, is that to make it super easy, I mean, all you got to do is find this path or this walkway, whatever. And um, it, it was great because uh, I can tell you, like, after flying for five hours and then getting somewhere where it's hot and sticky and humid, a shower and new clothes is pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, and I hope that the people sitting next to me in the airport have done the exact same behavior <laughs> on the airplane, rather. So, uh, what I will say is that I'm, I thought, okay, so I'll be here. 12 hours now it's not like I engineered these this layover this way um, it just sort of worked out this way because I used points on United to take tire ways from pardon me from Suvarna Boom over here to um, Pudong and then I'm using Delta points to get from Pudong over to LAX uh, non-stop which is pretty sweet so 13 hours in a tube <laughs> Uh, but the nice thing is, is that I got uh, Economy Plus or something plus. Anyway, the short answer is that I have the Delta seat with like the extra legroom. I don't believe it's premium economy, uh, and it's certainly not business class, but uh, I think out of pocket I paid uh, $80, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, I actually, uh, oh yeah, so 222 so plenty of time. Um, and my experience so far with Terminal 1 is that it's very easy to navigate, as is Terminal 2. Um, it's super easy to get around here. And, you know, the nice thing really is it's no different than any other international airport. I mean, you can close your eyes and plop yourself down to any international airport and everything, literally everything that I've experienced is that it's in the local language and it's in English. So, pretty damn lucky. Uh, oh, and then she gave me my 200 won back in, you know, seconds. So anyway, I'm going to go through security. I like to turn the camera off when I do that. They seem to get a little touchy in most airports, not the least of which is the United States. So, on my way, up to Delta to check in, and then hello LAX. Talk to you soon. Ciao. So I don't know if you can see the lack of line over there. That's pretty amazing. I uh, acknowledge the fact that I'm blessed. And I can tell you that, uh, you know, a lot of what the Thais talk about, about having luck and, you know, wearing my Buddha and that sort of thing for good luck, I do. If you don't know, I actually pray in the mornings for Buddha to keep me safe, happy, kind, and lucky. Uh, and so far, so good, because it is 2.30 in the afternoon on a Friday, on a Saturday. And there was no line to get in here. Now, I've been crossing my fingers that the line to check my bags in upstairs, as well as to get through security, is of similar density, uh, i.e. zero. Uh, but so far, I can tell you that Terminal 1, amidst the fact that it might be aged, actually, it's 226. Uh, in comparison to Terminal 2, so far, the lines have been uh, to my liking. So anyway, so I'm heading upstairs, uh, going to check in, and then I will let you know how uh, security went. Um, it was interesting, Gracie, when she came in, uh, that I don't believe they gave her a, um, a, uh, uh, entry and departure, arrival, sorry, arrival slash departure card, meaning it's one, and then there's perforation in the middle, and you get that when you go into Thailand or uh, other countries, uh, and in fact, I was asleep, and they left it on the seat next to me, for me, 
Um, but of course, I'm painfully not Chinese. <laughs> so uh, Gracie being a little Asian, they thought, well, maybe she's got a Chinese passport. Uh, so she didn't get one. And then so when she got to the, the um, immigration officer, then she had to fill in an arrival card, but not a departure card, which I thought was or maybe she had to fill in a departure card, not an arrival card, but it was bizarre. Uh, I would submit she had to fill in an arrival card. Anyway, regardless, I filled out both of those, uh, and it was very easy, just like every other country I've been to. So, anyway, so I'm upstairs. I actually may come down here and go to this restaurant and chill out, because that would be nice. And in fact, I've got been an hour and a half to wait before I can put my luggage in. But I'm going to see what the statuses of the, you know, I may actually get a Chinese SIM, uh, because I'm a huge fan of China Telecom, uh, China Mobile, China Mobile, sorry, uh, and in fact, uh, I think their stock might go up fairly well over the next three to five years. Um, the, uh, sorry, the Alibaba find for me, and the Baba stock was amazing, and, uh, I still think that that's got another, you know, 20 to 30 percent to go before it uh, ends up around 200 by the end of the year. But that's just me. All I can tell you is that basically every dollar that I gave Jack Ma in January is now worth a dollar 70 as of uh, uh, September 8th, so 2017. So pretty awesome. Anyway, so I actually saw another guy who did a video, and he was here in Terminal 1, uh, and uh, so it's got a pretty awesome roof line, and they did a similar sort of deployment over in Terminal 2 when they made that one. Uh, so anyway, it's a, you know, very comfortable, easy to navigate na uh, international airport, so off to Delta. Talk to you soon, John. So that's me, so I'll be basically back here in about two hours. Uh, it's about 14.20 right now, <clears throat> but I just checked in on the kiosk. Uh, right there, and as was true to form <laughs> that I read on the website, two people have now tried to sell me an iPhone. <laughs> I'm like, why? Did you just because you make them here, you think I'm gonna buy? It? No, come on, dude. I mean, for sure, I have appreciation for future enterprisers, but <laughs> do you really think I'm gonna buy an iPhone from some guy in a t shirt with a black bag? Whatever, dude. Anyway, I mean, you know, who knows? Many people buy items that way, I suppose, but uh. So again, you know, like I mentioned, right, just like sorry, every other international airport, uh, it's the same gig. You get off, you get your bags, and uh, immediately you're not hounded, you're presented with an opportunity to take a cab. <laughs> um, and it's, uh, the level of vulnerability is probably based on the tint of your skin. <laughs> uh, but anyway. Uh, I didn't feel bothered at all, these guys are, you know, they're harmless. All you gotta do is not buy the damn iPhone. Um, unless you want to, it's up to you. I actually, there's a part of me that was like, you know, maybe I should get a Chinese SIM, but I, you know, I'm only here for a few hours. The Wi-Fi here is lousy. Um, and uh, even though you're supposed to be able to log in via SMS, it did, SS, it did SMS me a six-digit numeric passcode. I logged in, but still the internet wasn't connected, so whatever. Anyway, so I'm going to chill. Uh, the, uh, the immigration line is uh, equally as vacant as this. So I'm hoping that two hours from now, uh, the complexion is exactly the same. So anyway, uh, it's, uh, it's been a, you know, it's been a fine experience. I'm excited to come back though, um, because I really want to do see, I mean, there's nothing really modern about where I am right now. Um, but all that I read, um, about, I believe China's largest city, uh, it might not be as dense. I believe Beijing is denser, but I mean, anyway, I don't know. So I'll check back in once I get in uh, and past immigration and security and then uh, and then off to LAX. Ciao. So much like in your life, all I can do is share my experience, my strength and my hope, but definitely my experience. So it is uh, now 4.28. Uh, my flight leaves at 7.15. Um, I got through the security checkpoint, I got through immigration, um, and I was standing there just a little bit before 4 o'clock. So all in, like less than a half an hour. Um, I can tell you that my Delta flight, um, because I use like the Delta American Express card, and it's not like I fly Delta a ton, although lately they have been amazing with customer service. Uh, and I'm talking about the last 18 months, so I've been flying Delta when I can. Um, so I have Sky Priority, which it's not like I pay you know hundreds of thousands of dollars for that, but that's definitely awesome because I get to check my bags in first. 
uh, in front of, or I get, I get that special lane, right? Like it's not, I mean, it's almost like the first class lane, but for some reason it's got priority, so whatever. Um, I got through security and all that. Now, I'm sharing this with you because as I was speaking with the woman in front of me, actually, who's from Australia, both of us were commenting like, is it like one in the morning here? Because <laughs> when I landed at 5.30 uh, and was doing my initial video, you know, a lot of it was like, okay, yeah, there's nobody here. I get it. It's 5.30 in the morning, you know, and what's the complexion of this place going to be like at, you know, 5.30 in the evening? So it's uh, it's 4:30 and it's a Saturday. Okay, fine, but you know I'm telling you, man, my experience thus far, especially is specifically with Terminal One, is where I'm leaving now. I have no clue what Terminal Two is like right now. And actually, I can check with Gracie. She left about uh, well, she left about 5:30 in the morning. And the real bummer was her layover was between like midnight and 5 a.m. Um, the exact hours when there are no food, there's no food available. So well, that was a drag. Um, but the main reason I'm doing this is because a lot of what I read online when I googled the Pudong Shanghai Airport was that the lines are long and you gotta and I gotta tell you dude there's been no delta in experience here of excess waiting uh, certainly in comparison to like other places I've been um, gratefully, I have uh, Global Entry Trusted Traveler in the U.S., so I mean, I can get back into the U.S. in literally less than 60 seconds. But, uh, you know, the average wait to get back into LAX is, you know, twice, three times what it, what it just was here. Um, and leaving, although I would say that, like, when I leave, when I depart LAX, mm, you know, the line's probably the same, if not twice as long. Probably takes me probably takes me all in an hour by the time I drop my bags off and I get up to my gate at LAX. But anyway, so this is Terminal One, and the good news uh, I would submit for the uh, correct time departure of my airline is that the sun is out. As you can see, the uh, overcast is uh, certainly less, um, and it's not raining. So what I find is that is of benefit because that means um, that uh, airlines are not late to land, which therefore does not delay departure. So with any luck, uh, we'll get out of here on time, uh, although it really doesn't matter. I mean, once you're up in the air, considering the direction we're going, um, you basically make up any sort of delay. Uh, in the air, and so I'll be back to LAX. Uh, let's, oh, so that's the cool thing, right? So I leave here at 7:30. Okay, dude, I leave here at 7:30 p.m. this evening, and I get home at 4:30 p.m. this evening. <laughs> so uh, you know, I do have a big S on my chest, so that could possibly be why I can time travel. Um, but yeah, this is a huge benefit. Now, of course, to get this benefit, I had to basically throw away an entire day <laughs> to get over here, but whatever. So I got, basically, I have like three, uh, two hours before we start boarding. Uh, so I'm just going to basically walk around. Uh, and again, this airport is no different than any other, uh, other than the fact that Terminal 1 is the original one, and so therefore it's a little bit dated. Um... I was a little disappointed to learn that uh, United does not have a VIP lounge here because uh, I guess the United VIP lounge thingy that I have um, is only good at United, is exact United. It's not like it's the whole Star Alliance partnership, so that stinks. Um, but the good news is, is that it's it's clean here. It's the oh, that's the other thing I wanted to mention. So it's clean, but also the temperature is fine. I heard a, I, I read a, several reports of the fact that the air conditioning doesn't work real well in here. And as I'm walking along, I can tell you that there is cool air flowing in here. So again, I don't know whether I just lucked out and it's like a major Chinese holiday or something like this, and or or it's just a lull in the season now. I mean, it is the beginning of September, so you could argue that school is back in session. Um, and, you know, a lot of, uh, certainly it's Thailand, you know, it's low season there, right? Um, but anyway, I, I can tell you right now, my experience with uh, landing at Terminal 2 at 5 in the morning and departing Terminal 1 at 5.30 in the afternoon has been, uh, has been a good experience. Um, so now I'm basically going to go and buy um, some... Uh, 
probably get McDonald's. <laughs> uh, or actually, what I really love to do, you, you may not know this, so Gracie and I, this is a joke that we have. So I, whenever I'm in the airport, for whatever reason, it seems like I always eat a Burger King. Um, and so <laughs> when we were in Thailand, when we were in Bangkok, we ate a Burger King. We had, you know, like the number one or the number two, whatever, so like Whopper and double cheeseburger, fries and a Coke. Uh, and it, the conversion rate at the time, it ended up that meal for both of us was $25.62. <laughs> I don't think I've ever paid that much. Now, that said, when I left, when I left Las Vegas, I paid, uh, I think I paid uh, $13 for the, for the Whopper combo that I got in Las Vegas. So, whatever. For whatever reason, I seem to frequent uh, Burger Kings in airports only. <laughs> so, I never pay real price. I pay gargantuanly inflated airport prices. So, but anyway, I'm going to cruise around and uh, wherever I hope you're, wherever you're watching this, I do hope you're safe and happy. And I hope you're living the dream. Because if you're not living the dream, you're doing it wrong. And it's not difficult to live the dream. Ciao. Okay, I get that not every gate is full at the exact same time. But this is Saturday at like 4.30 in the afternoon in Shanghai. Dude, this is amazing. I mean, I don't know, maybe all of the flights that leave from these gates do so at like 10 p.m., 11 p.m., that sort of thing. But so far, I am just amazed. Um, I'm not complaining at all. Um, you know, quite frankly, it's one of the reasons I travel in the middle of the night is to have experiences like this at airports. But, uh, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty vacant. Now, again, the other gates that, and, and my gate that I'm at, which is way down there, which is number 18, um, is, uh, is, you know, it's got people in it. Most of the seats are filled, that sort of thing, because people are waiting for their flight. But anyway, so I'm just going to go grab some food and chill out. One more thing I actually wanted to document and mention about Terminal 1, uh, simply because the, what I read about it was completely in, uh, wrong, as far as my experience, which is, you know, as far as like sleeping in an airport, I mean, that's no fun or whatever, right? Especially if they have the seats that have the armrests. Um, all of the terminals, sorry, all of the gates here that I've seen in Terminal 1 have these kinds of seats, which, you know, even if you're seven feet tall, uh, you can lay down in them. And if you're, you know, sort of average size, three of them is usually good enough. Um, so that was just sort of an interesting thing because, you know, a lot of what I read was, you know, like, okay, go to this hotel uh, because sleeping in the airport, while they won't, you know, bother you or tell you to leave because they know you're probably there to catch a flight and you're not, <laughs> you don't get into the terminal by, you know, just by walking. Oh, you know what? The other thing too is um, I had like another two guys, I think, try and sell me iPhones. Um, and I just, I don't get, like, why they think, I mean, I guess they're successful at it, otherwise, why would they do it, right? But anyway, so, plenty of room to sleep in Terminal 1.